All right, so in this video, there's going to be a lot going on. It's going to be a bit of a long one, but it's really going to be uh, something that's helpful helpful for people who have uh, been having trouble setting up the servos, swapping new servos, changing spring sizes, all that kind of stuff. It's also going to help for keeping the uh, jumping servo on the 64 from overheating, and it'll also give your steering servo the highest chance of not burning out. Now you have to understand this is a really really cheap servo so the likelihood of it burning out is extremely high but we're gonna give it the best chance that it has to survive but even then this is something you're gonna have to upgrade no matter what so just keep that in mind. So this will basically give you the the longest life while you're waiting for the upgrade to come in shipping. If you do go with my recommendation, which is the um, uh, the B35 B uh, BHM, that would sorry the A35 BHM, uh, that would be the best upgrade to get. And shipping from AGFRC Direct usually comes inside seven days. So the goal is to get this one to last longer than seven days, or at least seven days. Now with that, we're going to go over uh, how to set the, you know, how to restart, zero out the, the, the endpoints on the rear and the front. And uh, yeah, basically just uh, help people that are newer to the, hob the hobby just get their head wrapped around these freaking servos. Because servos with these low riders is a huge deal. Uh, it's, uh, it's, we're using the servos to to create the hydraulic system. So as important as a hydraulic system is to a low rider is as important the servos are to the uh, to the low riders. So this is basically a, a LH, I'm, I don't even know what the acronym name is, but it's the 64 that comes with no body. So it has the old school uh, suspension links in the front. But luckily, uh, when you buy it, Red Cat did send me the upgraded V2 links for your charge. But I also ordered the chrome version, so I'll have the chrome versions to put on. But yeah, this is basically a raw, out-the-box OG64 chassis. The only thing that I've done is I put on the mod wheels from Red Cat Racing, get rid of those tall boys. And that is it. These are basically uh, the standard uh, low profile Red Cat wheels, the stuff that would come with the uh, newer releases and the Monte Carlo. Uh, it just has the, uh, the mod rims. All right, so yeah, the first thing uh, we're gonna have to do is take off the servo horns. Whenever you are resetting the servos for the switches, for the hydraulic system, not the steering just for the hydraulic system the way we're doing this is always uh we have to take off the servo horns so with that the first order of business is going to be to take out the screws for the servo horns which on the jumping servo is a bit of a pain in the butt because we have the steering steering servo right in the way we're going to have to move that steering servo in order to get that one out. And it would actually be a good idea just to take this sucker off uh, while we get the front, front servo uh, adjusted. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right. So now that we've got the steering servo out the way, we can now work on the jumping servo. Pop that sucker out. Now, uh, one thing I've done is I've left the car on for about half an hour, 45 minutes, just to let the servos get to their idle temperature. So if you'll see the, see the reef servo is at 84 right now. So this one's still going up. Last time I checked, it was actually at 83, 82.9, 82.3. So that's still going up. These are usually around 82, 83 too. So. Yeah, 83 still. So yeah, as we 
see we're doing this work this this servo actually should be raising up in temperature around 90 it, I don't want I don't want to see it going over 90 just sitting here doing nothing all right so get that circle on off and you'll notice that uh, we're going to take the servo horn off so that the suspension is not actually uh, being held up by the servo. There should not be any uh, pressure on the servo, it's the servo horn itself. Get that sucker off. First time taking them off, they're a little tight. Just work it off easy. You don't want to damage nothing. And they will work off. There we go. So, all right, now we got this one unhooked. So we'll be able to zero that one out. But I'm also gonna work on the rear ones. Now the rear uh, servos are a bit of a pain in the butt to deal with just because there's no real way to access where the servo horn is. So uh, it's a bit tedious. We gotta take off the uh, body attachment mount. Screw it, you know what? Take both screws out. And take that bitch off. There we go. I'm going to disconnect it from the shock so we don't have it actually uh, working on the shock itself. Alright, 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 alright. So, we've got shock disconnected. We've got server right here. And we've got server horn removed this easier we're just going to take the whole servo off We're just going to peel this off of the shock, boom, get that servo horn out. Oops. I am going to work the servo horn off. Just take your time, it'll come off. Let's see if they're working off. Boom. All right. Now we got all the servos off. All the, the suspension servos are disconnected. So now, the first thing to do is set our directions. We gotta make sure that the, all the servos are turning in the right direction. That's gonna include this one here. So that goes like that. We gotta make sure that. Sorry about that. There we go. All right, so now we have the RC ready to set up all the servo endpoints from a square zero position and set up the, uh, the direction, the servo directions, whether they're forward or reversed. So we have uh, basically, if you were to take, be taking in new electronics and putting it into the RC, this is exactly where you'd be. So we're first gonna start with the reversing, the reverse, the direction of the, the servos, whether it's gonna be normal or reversed. And we're just gonna start uh, and go from the steering servo all the way to the rear the rear uh, uh, suspension servos. Now it's important to do this first and to go through all the servos so that when we move over to the next step that's going to be adjusting the endpoints that all the servos are moving in the right direction first. So that's the key thing in order to make sure that everything is going to be 
uh, that we're actually able to start working on the endpoints because if the servers are not going in the right direction, there's no point in us working on those endpoints. So when it comes to steering, going towards the rear steers left, going towards the front steers right. So we got to make sure that this is when we're steering to the right and this is when we're steering to the left. All right, so we're going to turn the RC on. All right, so when we're looking at the server here, when I turn left, it goes like that. So actually, it's going the wrong direction. So when I turn left, it's going to make the mechanics of the wheel turn right. So we've got to make this go the other direction. So you go to the reverse and you switch it. And then we press enter to move on to the next one. So enter moves on to servo two. Because number two is the, uh, the throttle direction, you don't need to touch that at all. Just leave that where it is. We're going to go on to the jumping servo. So the jumping servo, when it goes towards the back, it goes up. And when it goes towards the front, it goes down. Okay, so jump up down up down so let's see which way it goes we gotta put this on just for a sec to see and i'm gonna raise the all right so this one's going in the right direction as you notice here just make a little small movement you don't want to move a lot so it, if in case it goes the wrong direction but it is moving the right way so we don't need to change that at all we move on to servo number four All right, servo number four, right here. Oh no, the servo number four, there's nothing on it, so we're gonna go move on to servo number five. And, and that is gonna be this side over here. So. Now, when it comes to the rear, when we go like this, it raises the suspension, and we go like this, it lowers the suspension. It's kind of tricky because the servo arm is going down to make the suspension go up, and it's going up to make the suspension go down. That doesn't really matter. We just, this is up, this is down for how the suspension is going to work. So we're just going to pop one of these servo horns on here. And make sure that it's going in the right direction. Oh, and this one is. So this is down, this is up, down, up, boom. So we know it's going in the right direction, so we don't need to change anything there. to the other side and this is going to be number six so we'll go over to number six and pop a little servo horn on here and this should be going in the wrong direction because uh the servos on either side if it's five and six left and right they're going to be going in the opposite direction so this should be actually wrong ah look there so up is going to try and pull the suspension through the car, which will burn out a servo, and down basically would raise the suspension. So this one needs to be reversed. Just make the adjustment here, boom. And now when we go up on the servo, it's gonna go adjust that so it's easier to see. When we go up on the servo, it's gonna bring the make the suspension go up and go down on the switch. It's going to make the suspension drop. All right. So now that we've got all servos going in the correct direction. Now this should be good for the red cat factory servos as long as they're not programmed. But if you used any other servos, this will need to be different. All right. So now that we've got, the reversing done, we're gonna to have to save it. So in order to save, you have to press and hold the save button. 
Boom. Now we're going to move over to endpoints. And they're all at 100. All right. So first one we're going to do is the easiest one, which is going to be the steering servo. Uh, actually, no. The last one we're going to do is the steering servo. Because we have to have that one removed in order to make the adjustments on the jumping servo. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is the two rear servos. Now, at 100, 100 is exactly where we want to start. Now, the way the adjustments work on the switches here is you have all the channels displayed over here. And then you have two different sets of your percentage points. So this is going to be one direction and this is going to be other direction. The direction that you're adjusting is the side that the little arrow is pointed at. Now, if you want to make the arrow switch to the other side, what you need to do is move the switch that's on that channel and then it will move over to the, the direction that you're, you're moving the switch in. So for steering, if I go to the, the, the right, it's going to go to the right side there. If I go to the left, it's going to switch over to the other side. So when you press to the right, it'll adjust the right side. Press to the left, it'll adjust the left side. So it's the same thing with all of the servos. So when it comes, when you want to switch from one to the next, you have to press the enter button and this will bring you down a channel. And the adjuster here will bring the number up and down. So what we want to go is go to the, uh, the rear channels, which is going to be five and six. So this one here, and it's on, the switches are pointed down, so it's going to be on the downside. If I move the switches up, they'll switch over to the other. So we want to make sure that this is on the downside, the switches are down when we're setting the endpoint for the drop. So, with the suspension drop like this, we basically put the servo horn back into the shock. And I understand it's not screwed in. What we're trying to do is we're going to move it a little bit back so we can get the actual servo horn on at the position that the suspension is at the lowest point for the, uh, the, the, the lowest point. So it's basically sitting on chassis. We want to get this to sit in there as easily as possible without actually uh, lifting the suspension. We want, we want to make this the low point, the lowest adjustment. We also want to take into consideration that it's not screwed in. So there might be a little bit of wiggle room there, but it doesn't matter if there's a little bit. We know we have a rough idea of where that servo is supposed to be. So that's what I got right here. Boom. So I got the servo on in the rough area where it's supposed to be. Now when I actually screw this in, it's gonna it's gonna raise the cert the suspension up a little bit. So I wanna I wanna bring that back some so that when I actually put it in place. It's not so high in the air. I want it to be as close to 100 as possible. So there we go. See how that sits. Oh, that's perfect. So that's sitting right like it would if it was screwed in. And we know that this is the low point because switches are all down. It's at 100%. Boom, that's exactly where we want to be. So we can actually go ahead and screw this servo all together. So we can screw the center point. This will be good. Now the rest of the adjustments we can make inside the controller, we have a good spot to start for the, the, the low side. Try and make sure that the, there's not uh, tension on the suspension or the servo arm when you're screwing it in. It makes it a little tougher to screw it in. You don't want to tweak the, 
the screw threads because it is all plastic. So just make sure that you're not putting too much load on that. Now, we're not gonna, now we're not gonna go ahead and just adjust all the endpoints for this servo over here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up the other side first so that while we're making our adjustments, both sides are hooked up. So we're gonna do the same thing over here. We're gonna put the shock back through this, through the piece right there. And then we're going to try and position this on where it would be with the suspension all dropped like this. And then make sure we're looking good when we have it where it's going to be as it's screwed in. This looks good. Now we can go ahead and screw them all back together. All right, so we got both servos in the rear connected and set to 100% on the low point and they're both sitting on that side. So let's go ahead and raise the switches and see where they go. Now, when you're doing this for the first time, you want to raise it slowly because if it starts going too far, you don't you want to stop. So let's see where it goes. See, look at that. See this side right here? It's going too far. We're gonna have to adjust that and it might do the same thing on the other side. Yeah, it does, just not as much. So what we're gonna have to do is adjust the top side. So, these two servos in the back is servo number uh, four, I'm uh, sorry, five and six, five and six. So we're gonna go ahead and do number five first. So we press enter till we get to channel number five and we make sure that channel five is on the upside of the switch. Cause what I want to work on is I want to work on this angle. I'm going to make it so that the shock and the uh, servo horn are perfectly in line with each other. So you just start now. This is also tricky, but it's pretty simple cause you can actually watch what the servo is doing. Uh, when you're going down on the number, you're reducing how far it travels. So because it's going too far, going down on this number will reduce that number and make the servo go less far. And once we got the servo perfectly in line, let me see right there, we got that nice and perfectly in line. Then we're good on that servo for the upside. So now we're gonna move over to channel number six and do the other side. We're just doing the exact same thing, making sure that that servo is perfectly in line. A little bit less. All right, so now you should see the two of them are pretty much lined up with each other. All right, now let's do it on the drop. Now we bring it all the way down. We just wanna make sure that all the way down We are equal on both sides. Now, what I like to do to do this is I just grab a caliper, go to the center point, and this one here, it's about eight millimeters. And this one here, it is seven millimeters. We're gonna bring this, this up to nine for both of them. So I wanna make this nine millimeters when sitting down. So we're gonna, I understand I wanna raise it, but because we're reducing how low it's sitting, we're going down on the number. So going down on the number is gonna raise the suspension. I know it's a little confusing. All right, so we wanna get this to nine millimeters. And we still got some ways to go. There we 
go. Perfect, nine millimeters. Now the reason I'm doing it only nine millimeters is because uh, you run into conflict on the interior, uh, little buckets in the back window. You can't really swing these arms too far back because you start getting into conflict with all those. And I wanna make sure it's just even on both sides. We've got this side exactly where we want, nine millimeters. Now we're gonna bring this one up a bunch. So we'll go to, because we're moving on back to channel number five, we've got to switch this over to channel number five. And we're working on the low side, making sure the sticks are down. And we're just going to reduce this number. It's probably going to be around 80. Let's see. That looks a little far. Yeah, that's a little far. That's 10. So we're going to bring this down a little bit more. Perfect, nine millimeters. So now we've got nine millimeters on both sides on the downside, and they both go to the exact same uh, angle on the upside. So the back is done. Now it should not have any brake action. You should be able to spin the wheels like this with the low pro profiles. I just know this already because I know my nine millimeter setting keeps the wheel spinning and doesn't create a, a break by pushing the, the wheel into the wheel well. So everything should spin fine on both sides. All right, so now we're gonna move over to the jumping servo. Now remember, we've had this all set up on the entire time. Let's see what our, let's see what our front servo is at. 82.2, so we're, right about where we were when we started a couple of degrees lower because there's been no actual load on it now we're going to go ahead and make the adjustment for the steering servo now right now sorry not for the steering servo for the jumping servo now because the jumping servo has a tendency to get hot it's a very very critical on how you set up now if you notice the rear you can go too far up you can go too far down and well you can't really go too far up on this side here uh, go, going downwards but it will pull the wheel into the wheel well so you do have a, a, a little bit too much in either direction that you can go especially on the upside you can go quite a bit further you can't on the on the front on the front is mechanically limited so this is as far sorry this is as far as it will go. You can't pull this arm, uh, push this arm any further. It's not going to make the servo, sorry, the front go up, go down anymore. It's not going to lower the front anymore. So this has to be set perfect so that when it's sitting at rest, it's not pushing on this at all because if it's pushing it's under a stall load and that's going to build heat inside the servo if it's pulling a little bit then the weight is actually on the servo and again it's going to build load so you really need to dial the low side of this servo extremely precisely now it's a little bit harder because we have a plastic servo horn plastic over here plastic over here and there's a bit of flex inside these things so you have to really look at the point in which the ball makes contact the point in which the ball makes contact with the arm over here you got to look at that very very closely to make sure that there's no flex or pressure on it trying to push the front further than it's supposed to go and now you might think well if I just have it all the way to the ground, when I put the servo horn on, everything's going to be perfect. No. And the reason because the endpoint steps go, let's say, three millimeters in each direction. So one step on the endpoint will be like three millimeters movement on the, uh, the, the servo horn tip. 
But if the, the point in which the suspension is not forcing is not perfectly on that step, then it's going to be pushing in one way or the other. So even if you adjust the endpoints, that little variation could still keep load on the servo and that will have it start building heat. When it starts building heat, it doesn't lower heat when you're off the servo, when you're not jumping it. Because usually you jump it a couple of times. When you jump it, it spikes the heat up and it tries to spike the heat up. But as soon as you're not using it, that the heat is starting to dissipate. If the heat's not dissipating when you're not on it because it's building heat on its own, the heat is going to continuously build, get hotter, 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 and you're just going to have a, a ballistically hot jumping servo. But you know what I'm going to do? I can't make it this easy. It can't be so absolutely easy for me to do it. And because I already know that there's a chunk less rotation in the front and jump servo, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my endpoints and on channel three, instead of starting at 100, we're gonna drop that down to 60. And we're gonna do the same thing on the upside. All right, so now our channel three for the jump servo is 60-60. Bring the switch back down. So with the switch back down, now I'm gonna put it on and make that 60 point my end point for, for down. And now, because I switched my end point, I don't have a perfect a perfect lineup for that step of the servo. So I'm gonna have to make an adjustment in the sub trim in order to get this to, to lay back down. So, so yeah, I need to So we need to adjust this one here. We're gonna save at 6060. Go to sub trim, channel three. Now we're gonna make some adjustments. There we go. Now, once you start getting to the, the maximum point where this can move forward, you'll actually notice that the servo horn moves still and this doesn't move. So when that happens, you know you're, you're pushing on that. So you wanna back it out a little bit and you wanna make sure that the, the ball going into the loophole is going straight. So I had to back it out some like that. And now we have the, the ball going straight. So if I go a little more, you'll see. You can hear it, but you can also see the little bit of flex there. Try and get this done right. Now I'm gonna bring that back some to take that flex out. See that, you see that little movement? So now it's pushing in there. As you can see, come on, zoom. The servo is trying to push on it. So I'm gonna bring that back a little bit. Booyah. All right, so now I'm just gonna do this with my face a little bit closer because uh, I just want to make sure that I do it correctly and looking through the lens of the camera 
it is not as easy. So I just want to make sure that I got this going on correctly. Oh yeah, you can actually wiggle it to make sure that it's actually loose in there. It's a good little, it's not super tight. I noticed that it's got a little bit of, a little wiggle to it. Now, I haven't adjusted the upside yet, so make sure you, know, you don't. Uh, now, we're first we're gonna save the the sub trim setting for the jump servo. Hold and save, and go back up to endpoints. Go down to channel three, and now we're gonna be working on. Now we got the low side done. So now we're gonna be working on the upside. Make sure we're not going. All right, so it seems like at 60%, we're already reduced the travel and we're not causing any problems anywhere. Now what you'll notice is if you start going too far, it's gonna start pulling on here, which is gonna start flexing the plastic. I'm gonna move it up from 60, just to show you what I mean. Move it up to 75. No, not yet. Let's keep going. And actually, what's going on is I'm pulling on, pulling on the servo over here. So if you notice what's going on, as soon as I get to the max, it's pulling this sideways. Because the servo horn's not connected, so it's not fixed, but when it gets to the max point, it's actually pulling that part there sideways. So we're gonna reduce that. Make that pulling stop. So because it's actually the arm's actually coming into contact with the servo, so we're gonna reduce this until it's not making contact with the servo. Oh. Careful. Okay, so no contact with the servo. There you have it. So now we got, it's a little bit a little bit maxed out on the front but this is actually a good little way to give some snap pop you really want to run it as high as it allow you to go up without you know flex pulling everything as long as it's got a little bit of tension all the way up there that's where you want to be because when you're trying to hop that's going to give it a little bit of extra snap just don't sit if you have the front jacked up, just don't have the switch all the way up, all the way up all the time. Have it down a little bit. Now, this is also something that's a preference thing. If you don't care about that extra snap for the hop, if you have weight in the back, you don't mind if a bumper st stands so you, you don't have that, uh, that issue, you'll hop like it's no thing. If that's your case, then just make sure that it's not flexing or, or pulling on anything at the top side and you should be good. We're gonna go ahead and screw these. Oh wait. Ooh, let's check what our temperatures are. Cause what I noticed what's going on right now, wait till you see this. When you see this, you're gonna trip. Boom, 104. So I'm pretty sure that has to do with me overdoing the setting on the upside there so we're going to reduce the upside a little bit even from that point because it must have been flexing a little too hard and make sure we're okay over here
All right, and we're good. Now notice the servo is silent. So now what should be happening is the temper should be, should be coming down on the servo. So while it was forcing there and I was doing the adjustment, uh, it, it heated up that servo. But we want to make sure that this sucker goes back down. So we're already actually starting to lose some heat at 103. What we're going to do is we're going to go on and move over to this servo here. And we're going to come back and check to see what that temperature is. All right, so steering servo it is. Now the steering servo is actually the only one. Oh, before we put the steering servo back in, let's screw on the servo horn. Okay, there's no other way to get to it later on. Where, this is the one. Okay. So yeah, we're we're already coming down on that. And because it's the easiest one, we're gonna be doing the centering based off where the wheels are. So we can go ahead and bolt this sucker right in. We don't need to worry about anything. Go on and just get that back. I'm not, I'm not shortcutting anywhere. I'm doing this from scratch, every aspect, zero shortcuts. All right. So to start from zero for the servo, for the steering, what you need to do is center the wheels as best as possible. So do it with the wheels as centered as possible, you go ahead and put the servo horn on. Make sure that the wheels stay as centered as possible. All right. And if they're not perfectly, perfectly dead center, we go to the sub trim again, and the sub trim we use to just center the wheels. But for now, they're pretty dead straight. And we're all good. So now when it comes to the steering servo, we want it so that when we turn in one direction, it stops making noise. Like almost immediately after we arrive at the maximum turning angle. If the servo is still making noise after we've arrived at the maximum steering angle, we've got to turn it back so that it's not making any noise, that there's no work, no stress. So if you notice, when I get to the max turning angle, hear that noise, that's going to burn up the servo. Same thing in the other direction, that's going to burn up the servo. The wheels can only turn to a certain point, they're mechanically limited at that point. If the servo is trying to force them to steer past that point, that's going to force on the servo, force on the plastic, could break things, and it basically burns up these cheap, crappy servos. So we're going to start off by dropping the endpoints for the steering, which is channel 1, on both sides, all the way down to 60. All right, 60 is where we're going to start from. Now, if I go in each direction, as soon as I arrive there and I'm, I'm still holding it, it's not making any noise. So I'm just going to keep on increasing the steering angle, watching the wheel that is continuing to turn as I give it more adjustment, and listening to make sure the steering servo stop doesn't make any noise. Oh, as soon as I... I got the 63 and it started making noise. So now you take it off and you see 63 still makes noise. And you want to hit that angle 
a couple of times. You see it still makes noise? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring that right down to 60. 60 seems to be really good for that side. And let's see on the other, rather, the other direction. So now I'm at 73. Down some. So as soon as I arrive at the maximum steering point, the servo's not chirping. It's That's it, that's where we want to be for the, the steering. So we did the rear servos, we did the jumping servo, and we did the steering servo. Now let's see what the temps are like on that front servo. Oh, now we're already down to 91. Bring that back down. And yeah, so I'm just gonna keep this on, make sure that this drops down to like 85, 85, 86 is I think where we want it to be. I think we had it at like 85 or 89 before, something like that. And anyways, right around 85 to 90 in a cool room doing nothing is a good temp. Let's go ahead and see that. 85, that can't be right. Oh, we're at 90. So yeah, we know we got the, the low side setting on the, the front good. We got the, the back all dialed in. Yeah, I mean, at this point here, go ahead and reattach the, uh, man, I got one screw I forgot to put in. Where is this screw that I, oh, dang, right there. Gotta put that one back in. Oh, nice and snug. Whoa. That don't got to be so snug. Now, what I've just noticed right now is that the stock servo horn on the steering, if you screw it on too tight, the actual servo horn is going to make contact with the servo and press on each other. So if you're screwing the servo horn in too tight, it's forcing on the actual body of the servo to turn. I just I just noticed that right now. Like I literally screwed it on too tight, gave it a little looky-loo and it was just really close in there. So I'm gonna actually unscrew this. I'm gonna wiggle it out a little bit so that when I screw it on, I don't screw it on all the way to the body of the servo. Okay, make sure they're straight again. Okay, now I'm gonna screw this in, but as I screw it in, I'm just looking to make sure that the, the servo horn doesn't actually make contact with the body of the servo. Want it all the way there, up and to the point. And I'm going blind. All right. All right, so now there's no contact between the servo horn and the servo body. Oops, I got to adjust that some then. Just making sure that you know, as soon as I get to the end point, it stops making any noise. You gotta cycle it a couple of times because 
things flex through the chassis and everything. This is real time use type shit. All right. So that looks good. Let's see what our reef servo is at. 88.5. That is beautiful. I will just put on the Velcro piece here. And that's it. That's how you reset and put in all the servos. And if you were, you know, upgraded your servos, this is what you're going to have to do to get them all working correctly. Uh, if you've had to replace a servo because one burnt out, you have to go through this process. And it's very important. Sorry, it's uh, very important to take your time on the servos because if you plug things in with one wrong setting in the wrong direction, too far one way, the switch in the wrong position, it'll try and force its way past the point it can't go. And it can smoke and burn out a servo in a minute. It could like it can literally smoke and burn out a servo before you have time to grab the battery and unplug it. But there we have it. There we have it. Perfect temps. Perfect temps on the jumping servo so that when it's at rest and we're not using it, the temperature is going down. That's what we need to see. We need to see the temperature always going down and we're not actually using it. We've got the rear suspension maxed out and dropped right. So everything. And remember, last thing we do for for all the settings here is that we got them all adjusted in there. We gotta save them. So we'll hold the save button and get them all saved. All right, so the uh, kit's been uh, sitting here on since we've got the adjustments done. It's been about an hour. Let's see what the idle temp for the front servo is. 83.5. That is absolutely perfect. Let me just make sure. 2.8, 82.6. Yeah, right around 83. This is just perfect. So yeah, just sitting there. Should not be building heat, be dropping heat, but you can see just how quick heat can build up if you don't have those servos set up correctly. I was just making demonstrations, uh, pushing on the servos a little past, a little bit past the, the, the proper endpoint on either side. And just that was able to shoot that temperature up to 104. And then once we've got it adjusted correctly and we've got it sitting down at the lowest point, it brings itself back down to around 83. Just perfect. So yeah, with that, uh, hope that saves the uh, a lot of people their, their reef servos. So they don't end up burning them up. What ends up happening is that it gets so hot that it starts to lose performance. The hotter it gets, the more amps it pulls. And the more amps is wasted on uh, powering a heated servo, so you're losing power. I mean, it just stops working as good once you start uh, burning up them servos, and it's eventually going to burn out. And hopefully, uh, the endpoint settings and making sure there's that little gap between the servo and the actual body of the servo horn because this servo horn will press into that body and then force at all times it'll be constantly forcing that's uh, not good hopefully uh, this helps both those issues also the end points there so yeah everything is set it's basically gonna be the super long hour-long video on adjusting the servos 
for the Red Cat 64 Lowrider. I hope this was helpful. I hope uh, I've helped save someone from burning out a reef servo or from, I hope I've extended the life of the steering servo just long enough so that you can get the upgraded servo in shipping because this is poo poo. But at the end of the day, it very well could be that people are just burning up their servos because the servo horn is on too tight, making contact with the servo body, and that is just making the already crap servo burn up a whole lot faster than it would if this servo horn wasn't on it. Which is a good reason to upgrade your servo horns to aluminum servo horns so there is no flex inside those arms and that is that with that uh, i really hope the video was helpful uh, with this one please give me a like and a subscribe and uh, share the video if you can i'm really trying to build my channel as much as i can and everything that everything like that will help quite a bit so really do appreciate all the support i've been getting and uh have yourself a good night